Shalom Rastafari and a Rasyadinos Tefari Neng. I am Wendem Yadin, reporting for the Lion of Judah Society of His Imperial Majesty in the Americas, the Caribbean, and throughout this world. <laughs> yes. Um, and we're going to be broadcasting, hopefully, on the Ethiopian World Net and on other brother and, and, and sister brotherhood and, and sister church um, uh, channels. And also, you can join us on the Ethiopian World Net on the Facebook. All right? Now, we want to touch on the, the, the revolution, or what is called the Ethiopian Revolution, or what is also called the, uh, the Creeping Coup. Um, what we call the godless, right, the godless and um, creeping coup, you know, was because of what his imperial majesty said in um, May 5th, a victory day, Independence Day. He made a statement that up until now was very cryptic to many um, when he speaks about the, the cruel dragon. Now, let's see if we can bring that up. Um, let's bring up that window right here. Okay, we had dealt with this, the Oriana Falachi, full of cheese, Falassi interview. And let us bring up, okay, this is the Keyless Ethiopian, Ezekiel 30 and 9, and the Tooth and the Mato album. That's the God is, uh, is God Dead, you know, 1966. Um, okay, here we go, the speeches of His Imperial Majesty. All right, let's see if we can get this. Okay, this is from a, a Rastafari site right here. So how, how do you have this put together right here? Okay, let's probably um, don't go directly to that particular um, speech so we can get it right here on the wiki, right, the Wikipedia, right, the Wikipedia. Right, and so it has the speeches here on the Wikipedia. And we're going to, uh, it's called the Triumphant Entry. The Triumphant Entry, right? The Victory Day, May 5th, 1941. So you might have heard of me um, um, refer to this, refer to this as, um, to refer to this as uh, the Independence Day. Now, when you think of Independence Day, you think of, you know, all that extraterrestrial stuff that was, you know, going on in that Will Smith movie. But still, if hopefully they're doing it in spirit and in truth, give thanks for them doing certain things in Ethiopia to hopefully help the people, and hopefully they're not part of the um, the conspiracy. So let, let us pray, brothers and sisters. So here we're going to go to, it's near the end of the speech. Make it a little bit larger, uh, if you can. It's near the end of the speech. Um, when his imperial majesty makes this uh this cryptic um statement right that until re there we go take care take care right you see that that's good that's good take care right now this is the the triumphant entry right the triumphant entry um victory day may 5th 1941 pay pay attention to the date you think we have to study, we have to research, you think we have to know the truth, right? Because it's the truth that will set I and I free, and whom the Son has free, set free, is free indeed. Now, here says, here's, here's the last part of the speech right here. His Majesty says, we're going to begin from right here, he says, Take care not to spoil the good name of Ethiopia by acts which are un which are worthy, which are worthy of the enemy. It says, take care not to spoil the good name of Ethiopia by acts which are worthy of the enemy. We shall see that our enemies, our satans, in other words, the satans or those who seek the end of wheat, right? Our enemies are disarmed and sent the same way. They came. As St. George Caduceus Georgius who killed the dragon is the patron saint, the patron saint, right, of our army as well as of our allies. And there he's referring to, like, the British 
uh, you know, and the, it was a whole black British and black Britain, the seeds that created or civilized Europe, the essays by Ekoa will show how we have and why we have that link as Caduce Georgis. He was a Hebrew, you understand? Um, and it goes on to say, let us unite with our allies in everlasting friendship. So there was a covenant of friendship. That's what we say, that they broke the covenant. This is what we see prophetically in the Bible concerning the daughter of Tyre, that there was a covenant of friendship. You know what I'm saying? But that was violated. We see the violation of that by the BBC, namely because that was one of the allies of Imperial Ethiopia. So he said, let us unite with our allies in everlasting friendship or hotep, as you would say from ancient Egypt, the chetepu or the hotep, the salam, friendship. You understand that? We say brotherhood. And, am, and, and amity, right? And amity. Now, that's also a key connection, the amity flag of America and the Moorish connection. That's some footnote right there, right? But it says in order to do what? To be able to stand against what? The godless and cruel dragon. To stand against the godless and cruel dragon which has newly risen and which is oppressing mankind, which is downpressing humanity, right? And mankind, right? Even the Europeans are being downpressed by it. Even, I mean, overstand that white supremacy is a lie. I mean, scientifically, it goes against science, it goes against all the facts and evidence. So, so, so what um, drives them to such downpression of humanity and, 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 and we, the black people of the world? It's the devil. It's Satan. You understand? It's that godless and cruel dragon. But now notice how His Majesty says right here, which has newly risen. Isn't this uh, May 5th, 1941? It, it's his imperial majesty saying that it has newly risen, newly risen. Now, notice before this modern day and time, you know, with Don L. Daniel's prophecy, you understand, being in, in full effect, you understand, where information shall go to and fro, you understand, um, with uh, the telecommunications and the Internet, and you can research and find out things and things that um, wasn't known or things that were in private libraries are findable and shareable and onlineable. You know what I'm saying? That this is Donnell's prophecy, you know what I'm saying, being fulfilled. So now the King of Kings, he says something very interesting right here. He's speaking about the what? The godless and the who? The cruel dragon. And, 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 and what is he saying about this godless and cruel? Can he be talking about the Illuminati? Right? Is, 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 is he talking about the New World so-called order? You know what I'm saying? Is he talking about the Freemasons? You know what I'm saying? Is, is this who he's, is, is, are these the enemies, the, the, the enemies behind the enemies, and the enemy behind all of them is Satan? It's a regular Yehun? You know what I'm saying? Is this what his imperial majesty is really saying to us? These are the questions we, got, we have to ask, right? So his majesty says this right here, right? He says, he says, I charge you to consider them as a brother and a friend and to show them kindness and consideration. All right, this is his majesty, coronation. We have, have to recognize Christ and his kingdom character. He overstands the, the black Moshiach. So when he talk about the black Messiah and the COINTELPRO, he overstands who is this black Messiah? You understand, in truth. You understand, who has, who has the proof? You know what I'm saying? Who is coming from that true root? Who is that lion of the tribe of Judah, Moa Anbesa, the Imnegeta Yehuda? Who is bearing that faithful and true witness of our black Lord and Savior, of Getachinamit Hanatachin Jesus Christos, of Adonai Yeshua, you know what I'm saying? Of Adoni Yeshua, Hamoshia. It is the King of Kings. Now, overstanding this, just to give you a little background, now we can put the pieces together and recognize that the godless and the cruel dragon is a reference to Satan, firstly and foremostly, and then to the men and the people who are in the satanic, um, uh, the sa sa satanic conspiracy. You understand? But just as, just as um, the serpent deceived Eve, and, and, and there's an interesting part 
of uh, scriptural prophecy. You understand? There's a very interesting part that came to eye in my mind. Um, I think it's in uh, Corinthians, um, where where Paul says some very interesting things. Uh, um, right? Okay, bring this bring bring this around right here to to the this window right here. All right. Now this is this is where we're going with this revolution and so called the revolution and the creeping coup. You understand against the imperial majesty. Now we've touched on one part of it with the Kabbalistic ritual of the killing of the king and how that connects with the so called um, um, Rothschild and the and the Jews who call themselves Jews according to Revelation chapter two, um, chapter two verse nine. And just to remind you, you understand, and we look at uh, socialism and communism and the fact that there are three false gods. You understand the three false gods, the counterfeit trinity. You understand Marx, Engels, and Lenin. You understand Marx, Engels, and Lenin. And he turns their backs on his imperial majesty, as it says right here. It says, Ba go resu tenekesu. Ba go resu tenekesu. In other words, they bit the hand that fed them. This is one of the peerless Ethiopians right here, one of the students. He might be holding up. One of the pictures they, they, they photocopied, like they went to their kinkos or whatever they had out then. And, and you could tell it was a, in, you know, this was a conspiracy, you know what I'm saying, that was coming in. Now, why, the question a lot of us ask is, what, how could these students be so ungrateful? You know what I'm saying? What could have corrupted them? And so here comes to mind a particular scripture, right? And it's Second Corinthians chapter 11. It's speaking of the godly jealousy or the godly zealousy. It says, would to God, you understand? It said, would to God, right, that ye, it says, would to God, let me get this right here, would to God ye could, ye could bear with me a little in my folly, and indeed bear with me. For I am zealous over you with godly jealousy, or zealousy, being zealous, having a zeal, the rightful, Jealousy or being zealous, right? For I have espoused you to one husband. You know what I'm saying? But they went after, after this, after the creeping coup and conspiracy, they would go after the Balin. You understand? They would go after the other gods and other lords, after Marx, Engels, and Lenin, a false, a counterfeit trinity. You know, but that's all part of the godless and the cruel dragon, right? For I have espoused you to one husband. You understand that I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. Now, think about the, ch the chastity, the virgin, right? And think about also Ethiopia and Revelation chapter 12. You understand? We're talking about the dragon persecuting that woman and the persecution against, against Judeo-Christian Ethiopia. You understand? Especially in these latter days, in this dispensation, days and time, right? Verse 3, it says, But I fear, least by any means, as the serpent beguiled Eve through, the, through his subtlety, remember that's the same word that's used in the Garden of Eden, right? So your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in the Moshiach, that is in Christ. Then it goes on to say, if he that cometh preacheth another Jesus or Yeshua, whom we have not preached, or if ye receive another spirit, like an unholy ghost, a zeitgeist, which ye have not received, or another gospel, you know, the false and the counterfeit gospels that are circulating around in the world, which ye have not accepted, ye might well bear with him, right? You might well bear with it, put up with it. You know how so many people get all upset, you know what I'm saying, because we are preaching this truth, but they cannot verse us in the word. They cannot bring forth any evidence. Or they can say, well, that's not it, that's not it, that's not, that's not Jesus. And we say, look what the Bible says. I mean, look at the catacombs. Look at the ancient picture. Look at the black Madonna. And, and, and why don't I get it? it? Remember what the Word says, that the devil has taken ones captive at his own will. You understand? So really pray for these ones, but still be on your, you understand, be on your guard. Now, it goes on to say in verse 13 of the same chapter of 2 Corinthians 11, it says, that there would be false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. Now, we have to recognize how his imperial majesty 
brought in and allowed other Christian, you know, denominations and ones, you know, who who, who came pretentiously but, but seemed to be sincere, and some were sincere. This is not a, a condemnation of all the, min, the missionary activities, but we see some vids out there, the Pente. Ask your Ethiopian friends about Pente. What's going on? They might be a Pente, so they might, you know, um, um, but I'm going to try to do some search on the web. There's a very good site that we used to link. We need to link that brother's site and some of the videos about the Pente, the Pente movement, what's going on in Ethiopia. But it says, and no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into the angel of light. Now, remember the whole Lucifer connection with the daughter of Tyre and Tyre's connection, you understand, with England and with the Balim or the Lords, the Sirs, the Lords of London. You understand, and that whole connection. You know what we're saying? We're speaking about the enemies of our Father and therefore the enemies of I and I and the enemies of our Lord and Savior, Yeshua, Hamoshi of Adonai. Verse 15 says, Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as ministers of righteousness, that they want to come and help. You understand, in Africa, like what happened in Haiti where they were kidnapping, you understand, kidnapping the, the, the children. And they said, well, well they're, they're a Christian ministry, but, they, you know, they're so forth and so on. But it's because we still are not growing up. We, ourselves, we who say we have this inborn conception, we are not coming to full birth, you know what I'm saying, coming to being born again, you know what I'm saying, so we can be empowered and authorized in the kingdom of the King of Kings and his Christ, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and getachina mit hanatachin Jesus Christos, but there will be this transformation, right, whose end shall be according to their works, you know what I'm saying, it's almost like when they say the chicken so-called so to speak, coming home, right, to roost, in a sense. Now, some blame His Majesty for this. See, that if His Majesty never allowed Western education, if His Majesty never allowed modern technology, if His Majesty never developed the country, if His Majesty kept it as an old fiefdom or, or, or like, you know, back in the 17th century and never brought it to the 21st century, it never would have happened. Such as the uh, Ethiopia Kingdom of God, I and I, brother in the border, is, Aramias, you understand, Kabeda, Wal, Kabeda, yes, Wal, the yeses, you understand, he's of that opinion, but we pray for him, because hopefully the evidence will prove, you understand, that, that, that one can prove it, you understand, if they, if they come to, you understand, if they come to it in spirit and in truth, all right, in spirit and in truth. All right, we hear some sounds and everything, you know, but there's a lot of crazy distractions. But, you know, in the blood of Yeshua HaMashiach, you understand from, 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 from covert and overt enemies. You understand? Because we have, we have spiritual authority. You understand? And we need to understand, you understand, what is in our divine heritage. You know what I'm saying? Where it says, no weapon that is formed against I and I shall prosper. You know what I'm saying? And every tongue that shall rise up in the judgment, I and I shall condemn. For this is the what? Heritage of the servants of Yahweh, he who be who he be, our divine majesty. You know, and, 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 and the righteousness, the true righteousness is of him. Now, that being said, so what we're going to link with next, okay, this is what eventually led to you understand, but we'll touch on that. You understand what a feat, right? Now, the next thing they want to link, right? The next thing we want to link right here is this clip right here. Yeah, the next link right here we're gonna link to is the um, is it this infiltrates the church? Uh, um, and it says, and over here, okay, here we go right here. The power, this vid, we put it on pause because something happened in education in America, right? But then something also happened in the educational system in Ethiopia, right? And this vid right here, the power behind, um, behind the, the, the New World Order, 
this section here that we kept on hold because uh, a, a rhema revelation was given to us. So we went to check it out and put it together, and we said, oh, whoa, this is the same thing that happened also in, in Ethiopia. Right, this is the same thing that happened also in Ethiopia, in this scene that we have right here, where the ones who he had fed and given like a double portion, you know what I'm saying? Just like Joseph, in a sense, gave that double portion to his brothers who, who sold him into slavery and all of that and, and treated him harshly and denied his vision because they denied the vision of his majesty. So, so let's see where Ethiopia is today and then let us, let, us, let us beseech her and beseech, you understand, know our Ethiopian brothers and sisters, especially in Christ, to repent. You understand, and to recall that second, you know, Second Chronicles, right? Second Chronicles, chapter seven, verse, uh, verse uh, fourteen. So now, there's this book here that we want to submit into the record. This might be a two-parter, right? This book right here. So you see this right here, the mission, right? Very interesting book, the mission, right? The mission is by um, um, who is it right over here? It's by. Han Valheim or, or Valheim Lockhart, you understand? And um, it's not by Rastafarian, you understand? But he gives a very honest um, summary and witness of the life, uh, reign, and character of Haile Selassie. And it's this page right here that we are looking at, XV or 15, Revolution Finale. And we want to just read a little bit of this and then... Hopefully we'll touch on that vid and what it says right there about the plot that was hatched at the end of um, at the end of World War. You understand to 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 to, to pervert history, to rewrite history. You understand know, to rewrite history. And so when we go further enough um, into the historical documents, we start to find a more faithful and truer testimony. And then when we look at a lot of the modern things. That's why a lot of the Ethiopians, even we meet, who are very educated, they don't understand this because something happened in the educational system that was satanic. You understand? A Luciferian um, conspiracy happened, right? Um, okay. It's, all right. All right. Yeah, because I still hear that out there. And all right. So let's um let's go forward, right? It says here um firmly. This is during the time of the um this is during the time of, of the different uprising because remember the parable of Jesus Christos concerning the, the sower and the and the seed and the other parables that that the good man, you know, the Balabate, the true Baal, the true husband, that he sowed he um he had good seeds that he gave to the Gebrewoch or to the husbandmen and, and then they came to him when he saw weeds coming up. And now this is the very same thing that was going on in the revolution or the finale, you understand, of the visitation, you understand, of our Godfather, you understand, of Abu Kadus, of Kedamawi, Haile Selassie, or Haile Selassie first. So Haile Selassie, he declared that he did not w wish to see the shedding of blood. You understand, some, there, there was some officers, uh, imperial officers of the police that, had shot some people, and the incident is in dispute. You know what I'm saying? And we know these things happen even over here in protest, so forth and so on, but no one says we're going to overthrow it. Even in England, these kind of things happen, and no one said they want to overthrow the monarchy. If you try to say that in England, you go to the tower. Yeah, that's, that's a high crime in England to even consider it, especially for a so-called subject. You know what I'm saying? But his majesty allowed such protests, right? And he goes on to say, it goes on to say that he... He would never again give orders that could have that result, right? Everyone felt agonized at what he was demanding. In other words, many wanted to shoot these careless Ethiopians. Uh, many other Ethiopians, the patriots, they, 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 almost like what's going on right now in America, if you, if you really keep your eye, you understand, know, on, on the various different movements, right? But it goes on to say the military stormed, at him. The military was like, listen, because the military was picking up certain things, you understand, that were going on. He could rely on three divisions 
that would definitely take his side. There were three divisions of the military that would notice that Trinity three. And what we're seeing happen I think here is the same thing we see happen of scripturally in heaven, where one of the cherubim, the anointed Kiru. Remember the Kiru was like the bodyguard kind of conspiracy. So as above, so below. You understand what we bind on earth, we bind in heaven. What we loose on earth, we loose in heaven. So see what was being loosed in Ethiopia. Now let's look at what's being manifested. You understand know even in this time globally, but particularly even in America. And there was also the enormous army reserve of territorials. Right? He would be safe with the support of such forces. Right, so a lot of this spin that we get about the revolution and his majesty, this and that, he, he was weak or whatever like that because he did not want to see bloodshed. You understand? He wanted his, the children he nurtured and, and grew up as we have here in, um, when you go to Isaiah. Just look at this picture here before you and then turn your Bibles to Isaiah, just chapter 1. Just chapter 1. We went through this in, in the Repentance series. But let's turn to this right here, where it says, Hear, O heaven, and give ear, verse 2, O earth. For the Lord Yahweh, he who be who he be, his divine majesty have spoken. I have nourished and brought up children, and they have rebelled against me. The ox knoweth his owner, and the ass, the ahiyah, his master's crib. But it's Israel doth not know my people doth not consider. Ethiopians at home and abroad did not consider what was going on in this time. Ah, sinful nation, a people laden with iniquity, with rebellion, a seed of evildoers, an evil generation, children that are corrupted. They have forsaken Yahweh. They have forsaken he who be who he be, his imperial majesty. They have provoked the Holy One, Caduce, of Israel, the son, Yeshua HaMoshiach, to anger. They have gone away backwards, right? They've gone away backwards. So what, if you look at Isaiah, the opening pages of Isaiah, and you look at what occurred in Ethiopia in the so-called uh, revolution or the creeping coup, you know what I'm And the interesting thing is there's only a remnant of Ethiopians that really recognize it, but still it's a faithful remnant. We must pray for them. You know what I'm saying? We, I, mean, I mean, the resources of prayer cannot be under and should never be underestimated. Let's go on for the match. He says we're on page 122 of the mission. You know what I'm saying? And this is the line of the tribe of Judah mission. So it goes on to say that he would be safe with the support of such forces. So this idea that his majesty could not, you know what I'm saying, defend himself or, 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 or the empire or whatever, like, it is a lie. You know what I'm saying? His horrified ministers and aides and all the members of the imperial family besought him. There were cries of rage and despair. If the armed forces were not to be allowed to fight now, they would be forced to join the rebellion. Over, over that. Now, many still may not understand, but the more you learn about the whole New World Order... Conspiracy, Albert Pikey, Helena Blavatsky, um, the externalization of the hierarchy, Alice Bailey, and what they had designed, and even Albert Pikey, the wars, and to kill Christians, and to kill the faithful, and against Adonai. So, so that was all a part of it. Yes, and they wanted such a civil war because then they could step in. His Majesty wanted them to step up and recognize, right? So... It said here that if the armed forces were not allowed to fight now, they would be forced to join the rebellion. But, you see, that would have led to what his majesty was resisting from the, the lords of London, the Balaam, and the globalists. You know what I'm saying? To bring the Ethiopian shekel economy or the burr, you know what I'm saying? To, to give the Ethiopians fiat money. His majesty resisted, but then he had certain students that had gone abroad and joined and were initiated in certain secret society, like the York Rite, Scottish Rite, and other sort of um, 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 Freemasonic societies. And, and, and they also got seduced by the educational system and the Luciferian agenda that had crept in. And that's what the, the power behind the New World Order. 
goes into goes into more details about. Now here it says, but the emperor Nagusa Nagas quietly and adamantly repeated his decision. There will be no bloodshed. But negotiations instead, no, it's come, let us reason together. And that's Isaiah chapter 1 right here. Um, 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 let's read this right here. Where it says in, in verse 18, come now, let us reason together, saith the Lord, Yahweh. He will be who he be. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. If ye, if ye, if y'all careless Ethiopian, if that, that, that generation had been willing and obedient, ye shall eat the good of the land. But if ye refuse and rebel, ye shall be devoured with the sword. For the mouth of the Lord Yahweh hath spoken it. So now, now you're understanding how all these things actually come together. You understand? Even, even the, um, where's, where's the other, where, where's the other pick rate back here? Let's see if we find it. The other pick rate here. Well, this is eventually where they, you know, what they decided. You understand? That's basically what they had chosen to do. But now understand what His Majesty was saying. And understand the Word of God right there. And also see now in the revel revelation, you understand? If ye be willing, you understand? If ye be willing and obedient. In other words, they did not have to, right? They did not have to go that way. They did not have to make the decision that they had made. You understand? So they were given a choice. So when we look in a book like this right here, the mission, right, by Heinz Valheim Locken, like we say, he's not a Rastafarian. You know, he says something that we might not agree with, but he gives a very honest assessment. You know, saying Hans Valheim Lockert. You know, saying the German gives a very good assessment. You know, there are some good Germans actually. I mean, for real, some some really ones of faith. I mean, look at even Martin Luther. The problem was that it did not go all the way. You know, saying there was the Protestant Reformation, but that's all in the scriptures. The scriptures speak about that particular church whose works were not full, whose works were not complete. But so, that, so Negus and Negus, the king of kings, he quietly and adamantly repeated his decision there would be no bloodshed. So you have to understand that what was possessing some of the people that wanted to go to bloodshed. You, know, or you have to understand the, the, the spiritual warfare, you understand, that was, that was on Ethiopia in that time. And so when we look at the Oriana Falachi, you know, saying, or fallacy interview, and her asking about death, but she's acknowledging some things there too, that it's, it, it, is, it is with his hand, the hand of God, and that righteousness, that Ethiopia stays united. So what will happen after you're gone? And they were seeking to push for that. So what they did was what the serpent did in a sense was deceive Eve. You understand? Know, yeah, Eve in that sense is like, it likened to Israel, and Israel is likened to Holy Ethiopia in the prophecy and throughout the scriptures. That's why it says, aren't you like unto me? You understand? Aren't you like unto the children, excuse me, of the Ethiopians unto me, O children of Israel? You understand? In Psalm 68, um, verse 31, princes shall come out of Egypt. Ethiopia shall stretch forth her hands to God. You understand? But now we're in this very interesting prophetic time and space. So was he not able to see that bloodshed would suddenly follow a revolution and that he was not only putting his own life at stake but sacrificing all those who had served him faithfully for so long? Well, you know, this is his personal opinion. That's where, where Hans Valheim Lockhart, you know, he puts in his own personal opinion right there. And that's like the seclorum. That's like the worldly way of looking at it. You understand? Because you, not, they wasn't looking at it from the biblical, the prophetic perspective. You have to understand that. Actually, if he had went that route, th that's when Ethiopia would have been handed over or would have been taken up in receivership after the war. Then all the demons could have really come, come in. I mean, believe it or not, like it or not, many of us will also ask that question, why did he not fight? Well, as we have grown up, as we become mature in Christ, we recognize. Hala Salachi said, it is no longer a matter for me. 
In other words, I brought you up. What are you going to do about it? They wanted it this way. You know, was the careless of that generation, they brought it to this. You understand? Then he, he was asked, what is our destiny? According to popular rumor, his answer was, pray to God. He will forgive you. I mean, this is very, very important to recognize because many of us have been agonizing on what was really going on. You understand? Why did it really happen like that? You know what I'm saying? And trying to put the pieces together. And it's only in the true and living faith, approaching this from our faith base, you understand, from that only faith.